OTB's The Hurling Pod with Ford Gosh Energy, proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship. Welcome along. It is our first live hurling pod of the season after the National Hurling League final. Clare have won the National Hurling League for the fifth time and the first time since 2016. Kilkenny have now lost four national finals in the last two and a half years as well. 2 10 on the night for Aidan McCarthy for the banner. David Fitzgerald with the other goal early in the second half. Owen Cody scored a Kilkenny goal, also at a late penalty saved, which could have put Kilkenny up by a point with a minute or two to go. There were probably a very nervy five minutes of injury time for Clare supporters, but they held on for victory in the end. Delighted to say we've got a former Clare Jewel star with us off the top of the show today as well, and Podge Collins. Podge, how are you getting on? Good, Will. Thanks for having me on. Good, old, ah, good, day, in Tur- good day in Turles to be a Clare fan. Well, there you go. You'd be hoping for some more good days probably in Semple Stadium throughout the rest of the summer now after this. Also, Paul Murphy and James Scale, of course, are here as normal. The Hurling Pod brought to you live on this Saturday night. Uh, you can hear the sound of Semple in the background with thanks to Borgosh Energy. They are the proud sponsors of the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. So, Pod, you can you can take it up here. Um, we were watching the game, WhatsApp and away during it in the group, the three of us, and we are thinking, first half hour or so, Kilkenny are a little bit wasteful. Only nine scores from their first 20 shots on goal. And then Clare kind of really upped that clinical edge after that first goal from McCarthy after Blanchfield was turned over. And Clare played pretty well for most of the second half would be my overall assessment of the game. Yeah, I was surprised. I got a few messages just saying like what an entertainment game it was and what a great game of Hurling was. But for the first 20 minutes, it really had a... in this, this. I suppose the fans hadn't really got into it yet. It seemed quite dead. And then after the goal, definitely, and the hit from Adrian Mullen, it really kind of sparked into life and probably went in at half time and sorted a few different things out and the second half was just an excellent an excellent watch as a like to be to be a fan of, to be a spectator it um a really entertaining game of hurling anyway and especially to finish i always say you can nearly have a bad game of hurling or a bad game of football but once it's close at the end the fans really get into it it kind of enhances the experience and uh, definitely there the clear fans and myself included were getting worried but uh, thankfully we held on and for an important victory yeah, like look, wide view on all this. Clare go through the league unbeaten as it works out. They've used 34 different players. So Matt McInerney and Shane O'Donnell get onto the pitch today. Tony Kelly still has to come back in. We still need to see Ryan Taylor come back in as well. Like overall, I would say Brian Lone is very happy with how this spring has gone for Clare. Yeah, definitely. If you're looking at this team last year, like bringing in Connor Lean, corner back, you're bringing in Keen Galvin, Daryl Owen, midfield. Like it's a really, there's a lot of players that we probably haven't seen that much of. I'd say Brian's going to be very happy going into Munster with the panel he's used because if we lose one or two I think over even when I was playing if we lost one or two big names it was always a worry I just really think they've developed a panel this year I just think they're stronger and uh, hopefully they can bring that into Munster Podge I'll give you a first shout in the Adrian Mullen instant then it was the flare up just before half time uh, we felt initially I think Skell and I both rolled back in it slightly that it looked like it was a very fair shoulder Colin Malone has gone into contact two players come in but Mullen obviously the more aggressive of the two look shoulder to shoulder then on the half time we were thinking there's a bit of helmet contact there so maybe the right decision was a yellow card what was your take on the Podge? Yeah, well, I'd be wor- I'm nearly worried commenting, commenting about this because you, you named the pod tip won't get out of the monster a few weeks ago and then and then, and then you continue to give out in the pod that people from tip were slating you on twitter are saying what were they? it was only one thing in the said in the pod but, but you named the podcast that so once you don't once you don't name it something like oh podge thinks adrian mullen should have got a red card or something which i don't but uh it looked like a good hit it looked like a good hit here in person a uh, very solid hit kyle wasn't expecting it uh adrian did not go into doom and the helmet he went to hit him with the shoulder he probably got him more front of the shoulder from what i could see and uh, then clean on the side on and then probably helmets collide after the power of the collision and um in ref the ref was right to blow it up and um, whether it was a free yellow card or not i don't know but that i thought like adrian mullen went to hit him a good fair solid shoulder cause a tough cause a tough buckle himself and uh yeah i would have thrown it in probably and play on Murph, it brought the game to life in a lot of ways. It kind of was a spark during the game and certainly cleared a very good spell after it as well. What was your read on it? Because I think you felt it was a fair shoulder initially, at least. Yeah, I thought it was a good shoulder. Um, again, looking back, you can see there's there's helmet collision. But like, I, I think the big one with this was that Cotton Malone wasn't expecting it. I mean, when you're not expecting it, I think we've all been in that position where you rise up, you're trying to get your head up the field, and you're hit with a whack of a shoulder. And like Cotton Malone wasn't, you know, trying to draw any sort of a free. He went down. Uh, and I think the fact that there was a bit of a ruckus after it, then I think that draws our free into thinking maybe there was more to it than what there was. I thought it was a fair shoulder. Pod, you made a good point before coming on, not throwing you under the bus. But like when when shoulder to shoulders happen, 
quite often, I'd say 90% of those cases, helmets collide because you're that close to the player. But look, I thought it was a fair, I thought it was a good tackle. I may be biased in that, but I also think that, you know, you're probably not going to see as hard a shoulder as that that's going to be any more level than that. Like, I mean, when, when players are moving that quick, you go for a fair shoulder. It's it, There's a fraction of a chance there that, like Paj is saying, you're not going to get it square on the shoulder. You'll get it maybe just to the front. Um, but I didn't think, uh, I didn't, I, I thought it was a good shoulder. I'll put it that way. I thought it was a good shoulder. When you look back at it five times, it's easy to nitpick at it. But I thought in the moment, you know, I, th- I think back to like of uh, Dahi Burke's shoulder against um, Seamus Harnady uh, in, in Turles there maybe two years ago. Similar to that, like Harnady wasn't expecting it, hit hard, and you just kind of get on with it. But look, at the same time, it was a, it was a hard call for Johnny Murphy as well. I will say that. He got one quick look at it. The linesman got one quick look. Caught him alone isn't a man to stay down. So maybe there's something there where you go, maybe there's a little bit more on it. So look, as a Kilkenny supporter, I mean, the fact Adrian got a yellow card, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it either. You know, it's marginal. Yeah, uh, your comments, by the way, are more than welcome. You see them flashing up on screen there uh, from the YouTube and from the Facebook so far, uh, including your Keith Scanlon. There was a fair shoulder. Ref was shocking the last few minutes, like Hogan was taken out, uh, coming out with the ball and was done for travelling. That was that was a very weird one, Skell, where it seemed to me as if Hogan was coming out very fairly and freeze given against him. That was about two minutes to go. Yeah, I think he picked it up fairly well. He came onto the ball at pace and kind of went into traffic and... I thought originally that he was going to get himself in a bit of trouble with, with overcarrying, but he seemed to, to sidestep to the right, and it's like he got rugby tackled by Blanchfield, and then I suppose, you know, for me, I thought it was a free out. I thought that he did, he did fierce well, but was tackled in such a way that that uh, he couldn't avoid, if you like. Um, but it was a free in. So like I, and look, come here. I'm usually the first man here to kind of um, berate the referee somewhat, but yes, I, yes, I you thought are. he did. Go on. I thought he contributed. In fairness, I thought he contributed as well. It was a really, really entertaining last call of twenty minutes. I think the first half, it was what it was. I think we, we, we know that. But in terms of the second half as a whole, and especially the last 10, I thought he, he let, let the game go. He had developed, as Paul said, the crowd got really into it. And even us at home, me for, as a neutral, got really into it. And I was kind of hoping for for the good reasons, Podge. He can either hit a goal or hit another point and we get an extra time. And my prediction would be right. <laughs> but it wasn't to be. <laughs> so here we are. But ultimately, I thought it was really, like a really good... Really, I, think, I think it's what the league needed. It's the way the league needed to finish off, I think. I think everyone has been kind of unanimous in their, in their thought process that the league has been okay. So for have it, to have it finish off in that kind of manner, manner with huge excitement below and Thurlis, you know, a good shot. Well, here you go, Skell. Goalkeepers Union here from Junior Zed Hurler. Thoughts on the first clear goal, Skell? Thought Owen could have done better or am I being harsh? Yeah, even Grace was saying the same thing to me. Like, should like now she's a you know, you know she's a professional. She, should why was he better? He's near post. You know, <laughs> this is the wife asking me. Like, um, for two things. One, I think the the distance he was quite close. Two, the power was was was, was a serious power of the shot. And probably I'd say Owen will tell you he gave him just a probably a half yard too much, a little bit too much light. Um, and and uh, we've we've said before there's always an expectancy that when you're when you're that side of the goal is that people are going to shoot across you. You know, they never really go to your near post. So I'd always be harping on to our forwards that if you get an opportunity to go near post, the goalkeeper never expects it. I just think it was a great finish all around. So I wouldn't be harsh on there at all. I just thought the, the, the pace, the shot, as well as the placement was was, was, was top class. Yeah, like Podge, can, can, go on, Podge. Can, I, can I just come in there, uh, Skell and Paul, both of you? Because, Paul, you played in the full back line and Skell, you, you played in goals. So Mark Rogers is sold and true and Tommy Walsh drops off Avon McCarthy and stands mm. beside... Paul Owen Murphy. Owen Murphy's yeah. the best goalie in Ireland, with, along with Nicky Quaid, they're both exception. But like Owen Murphy can mind his goals. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't give a man the ball with two catches standing seven or eight or whatever, ten yards from goals. Like yeah. I, I just don't understand that from intercounty players. Like Tommy Walsh, yeah, he's an excellent cornerback, but I don't understand that. No, yeah, I, I can't I, 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 I thought the same thing. Like I actually thought uh the first place to look was kind of Tommy, because I was looking at it again from a cornerback's point of view, and I'd be saying like you're in no man's land there. You're actually blocking Owen Murphy's sight of it if he's go across the goal. And the other thing is, charge him down. You're you're going to give him space to strike the ball, like run at him at least. But I don't think Tommy closed him down. Even when the hand pass came in, he kind of held his ground. And from a goalkeeper's point of view, I think you're, that's nearly more of a hindrance. You're kind of half blocking Aidan McCarthy, but like that ball probably snapped through past Tommy Walsh, and then Owen Murphy sees it. It's a bit of a yeah, I, I'd agree with you there, Podge. I think I think Tommy Walsh should have ran out and closed him, or or in the first place, not have been that far away from him at all. Like, Worf, don't you think that if you've got a two-on-one situation, which is what developed there, you'd normally get a call, call from your goalkeeper saying to to bull rush the guy who has the ball. Yeah. That then will give the goalkeeper an opportunity to go and close the guy who gets the ball past it. If you drop off, you're only inviting trouble. You're really you're really yeah. inviting trouble. So the minute you drop off, 
A, you're hindering your goalkeeper, but B, you're allowing that position to get more yards towards the goal, which is just too too dangerous. He should have bull rushed the ball carrier. Then if he pops it, it allows Murph to come out. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, if, yeah. and then it's just it's your probability to save it is higher. So but the way it transpired, it went way, way down. Good point, point. Yeah. Very, very good point and well made. Uh, there has been a question about the uh, the red skins which are being worn by Adam Hogan. Uh, Scal, you're oh, usually the fashionista here. What do you think? <laughs> friend, Paul, you know him, right? A really good friend from college, Bernard Gaffney, right? Uh, he says to me, he texts me there, and he goes, we're on about the game, and he says, Adam Hogan, some yoke. My response was, I can't respect him with the red sleeves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I think he's a great cornerback. Like I think he's super. Like he's real sticky and kind of a tyrant type person. But just please, I'm, I'm the fashion expert here, Podge, as you can see in the Patriots stuff, right? It's just change blue, it's change yellow. we will all be on our side then. <laughs> what do you reckon, Podge? Should he had a blue one tonight? If he keeps playing like that and like he did for Mario, he can wear whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Well, we should be congratulating you, by the way, about Mary I. A whole load of them are going up to guess uh, Fitzgibbon team of the tournaments uh, during the week as well. Um, I'm not getting off the beaten track of the final at all, but congratulations <laughs> to you and Jamie has been part of the management team. We were chatting about that kind of emotional embrace and video and picture that everyone seemed to capture at the end of it. Um, for you guys, like as family, and as Jamie has talked about a few times, I suppose growing up together and kind of dreaming of playing maybe in all Ireland's either together or against each other, oh. that must have been some moment when Mary I got that win. Yeah, it's class. It's um, it's better. It's it better for the players, like the crack they had after it, and just crack they have around college and the bond they developed throughout the year. Uh, it's just a great. It just enhances the college experience for them some amount. And you don't get the players like you don't only get a few sessions with them. You get to do very little with them. You try to do your best, obviously, when you're involved in a team, as as you know. But um, we had some ex exceptional players, and they had an absolute blast after it, and delighted for them, and uh. It'll enhance in college experience for the next few years, and we've a great team again next year. And I don't know if I'll be staying around now, but they have a good team next year, and hopefully they can do great things again. I know you're not walking away from a team who are defending the title, are you? <laughs> I was, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> oh, just a matter of interest, how many how many guys off the first fifteen are back next year? Roughly, oh, I think we're missing five, and what's coming in is what's coming in is fairly quality. Like it's yeah, it's a good, it's a good side. They're going to be competitive again next year, but. So are the others, UCC, like UL, NUIG are very strong. Um, Murph, I know you went to take a drink just as I went to ask you about how impactful not having TJ Reid was. Um, I know Owen Cody didn't hit the penalty particularly well. I guess that's the moment you would have wanted, TJ. Um, yeah, that would have been the moment. But like, I, I, I did hear the commentator saying it in my uh, Duolingo level four Irish. I figured out that they were saying that, but... Uh, I know, like Kenny had eleven different scores at the same time, like and and from from freeze they missed two freeze. So I was looking at like I mean, not saying that's just TJ's kind of place, but like there was a spread of scores which you were happy with. Um, I think TJ's influence, yes, would have would have maybe drawn the attention of maybe one of the particular player backs, let's say for example, and taken him out of the game. But um, certainly for the penalty, yeah, like Owen Cody went to go low, and I, I could see it on telly. Like I mean, that both of the squares respectively looked fairly cut up. Um, I'm like I'm not a free taker, but uh, for my own trained eye, I was looking, thinking, right, this is one time where you're 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 you don't have to strike it into the ground before it gets to the keeper, so you can just you know to make it tougher on the keeper. I'd say, given the conditions, um, you know, keeping it off the ground was the better option. But like in fairness, Saver Quilligan, like he just stayed behind it. I think it was tricky for him as well in that if that ball hit the ground, it was chance for it to skate Anton at all. He just got behind it he didn't even know himself I don't think he got up and he kind of had a look around to see where the ball was but um, yeah I think Owen Cody will, 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 will confess himself that was a poor penalty at an important time as well you know got that penalty where we could be facing into extra time um, but in fairness to Clare like once Kikenny missed that penalty okay Kikenny came back up and got a point or two you know Clare's defence was very resilient there like they didn't they didn't shy away from Kikenny either in the last few minutes despite the fact that they were cautious they could give away a free or two which you know, Claire will be happy with that if they're in the same situation now in the Munster Championship, that lads aren't stepping off their man, you're not protecting the lead. Claire stayed on and stayed being aggressive. So from a Kenny point of view, look, disappointing, uh, disappointing penalty could have maybe got us into a good position in the last few minutes. But um, look, at the same time, you'd be hoping once the ground dries up, once the ball dries up, I mean, I don't think any team is going to face that sort of a penalty again. It won't be that, those sort of conditions. So look, disappointing, but... Um, I think the more thing that'd be a bit, bit more disappointing than the penalty would be, I think half time nine wides. You know, that's something that's I'd be looking at a little bit more, a little, little bit of shot taking, 
the choice of position you were taking your shots from. I, I would have that higher ranked up than missing the penalty, to be honest. Is that the one thing that Adrian Mullen has to add, Murph? Is that sometimes in the first half he was kind of shooting when there were maybe players in better positions or Kilkenny could have recycled and went back again. Like We know how good a hurler he is, but if he's going to be playing further out the field, is that shot selection just the kind of the next step to make him that bit better? Um, I think with Adrian was, like you might just see that with Adrian one game every so often. It's not really a trait of his game where he just he's headless in games. But the thing is about him, I wouldn't discourage him from doing it because like, you know, I would have played with Adrian um, for, for many games where he just got these outstanding scores and he's kind of part of that Ballahale team that they, they 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 don't play with any sort of pressure on them. They just It's like they're playing in the backyard. It's like they're playing in the backfield with their friends and there's a great freedom about how they play. Like If you look at Owen Cody going through in the 25th minute for the goal, he's looking ahead and he just pops the ball out to Adrian. There's a lot of kind of you know, it's very intuitive stuff is what they do but I would encourage Adrian if I, if, you know, if I was part of the management team going forward, I'd be saying, listen, Work yourself into the game, get a few scores, and when you have those scores, then a point or two, you know, then you can maybe kind of express yourself a small bit more, a small bit more. But I think there's some players where you don't tell them fully. Listen, I, I'm going to tell you stop doing it. Like you know, I wouldn't be going out telling the Tony Kelly, listen, don't be shooting from the 65 over your shoulder because Tony Kelly can score. It. I think Adrian Mullins in that category, but there is other players I certainly would be going and saying, listen. That's not your forte. But Adrian today, certainly, look, I think there was maybe two or three wides. You could even see it as well. 19th minute, he catches a ball. Billy Ryan is off the shoulder. Could have popped it off. Would have been a goal opportunity. But it was just the decision-making there. So I just think it was one of those nights for Adrian where, you know, maybe a small bit more cool head and a few more scores would have came off or he would have set someone else up for scores. But I wouldn't be taking one game now and be thinking, right, Adrian Mullins will be shooting the whole time from ridiculous positions. So I think he's just one of those players, like I said, let him do his own devices. Someday he'll have an off day, but don't don't restrain him with all these rules. I love the way the listeners and viewers never have any concern for our well-being whatsoever. But yet, Podge looks a bit cold in the corner, and it's can we get a heater for him? Uh, someone else was saying he uh, looks very uh, dapper, Pod- actually. Yeah, I think he does look very dapper. I he think does. he's uh, he's after nice setting the standard. Uh, lads, it's Baltic here in Turles. Did, did, did someone did, did someone tell you that it was the hurling pod you were going on, not the Sunday game? I was wondering about it. Uh, I didn't bring enough jackets anyway, for sure. Yeah. We, we don't have that budget, Podge. We don't have that budget. No, budget we've all spent on Murphy. At least get him a blanket, or uh, Pods looks freezing. Let him go home. Well, he has to wait for Tommy anyway. Like I assume yeah. you and Tommy are probably carpooling Pods, are you? Because you're <laughs> Cratlow teammates now. <laughs> We're not actually, but Tommy is down a bit ear- earlier than me. But I, I just like it's Paul just talking about Adrian Mullen. He had seven shots in the first half, three points. Right? He didn't have any shot in the second half. Cody had no shot in the first half. I'd say if yeah. he had won, and then he comes into it in the second half in a big way. Like it, I, I just thought like Mullen, like he seemed to. He seemed to be well on top in his ma- duel in the first half, but the second half, he just didn't seem to get the same space. Maybe clear, obviously, recognised that at halftime and clamped down it. But uh, obviously, Massey coming on and getting four points, like he caused me yeah. to have a... I, I, Paul, hey, Paul, why isn't he starting? Massey going. We asked his question last year. I know. We asked his question last year, I know, I think he will start, to be honest. Like, um, like... he's but Well, he's, to be fair to me, he's been fairly consistent at full forward in terms of starting at full forward um, last year. But, like, I think... Looking at the Limerick game, they went for a bit of size and size. So then with John Donnelly and Luke Hogan, they brought those in. I think Massey might have been carrying a small bit knocked the last while, so he's been in and out. But like straight away, they went like for like, but they took Luke Hogan off and brought on Mossy and two very physical players. But like Mossy, Mossy's a great man to live off scraps. You know, sometimes Mossy might be present or mightn't be present in the game. And you know, lads will be saying, you know, maybe you should throw in a fellow a bit more style or something like that. But Mossy's physicality is immense. Like if you actually see him, like if you're standing beside him, he, he's such a strong character. But if, if you look at actually the rest of the players and you're talking about Owen Cody, you're talking about Adrian Mullen, Owen coming into it in the second half, not really been in it in the first half. That that's I think really the tale of it across the board for for a lot of Kilkenny players. Like Mossy Keown comes on five minutes to go in the first half and and walks away a top score from play. Well, like if you take Own Cody's goal out, but Own Cody got one one. But Mossy got Mossy got um four points. Like you look across the board, then like you know you have Jordan Malai a point, you have Keen Kenny two points, John Donnelly one, Adrian Mullen three. Like there was nobody. There, was, there wasn't like an Aidan McCarthy on the field except Leon for Kilkenny, who was absolutely on form tonight. I think it was Kilkenny's team play itself. A lot of long ball went into the forwards, which on the night I think would have suited Clare backs a small bit more. So I don't think from the performance we saw at Limerick to come to this performance at Clare, I don't think, I suppose, the backs and midfields providing ball for the forwards, um, I suppose, gave them real good top quality ball that, you know, you could have a lad going away with three or four points. But I agree with you, Owen Cody wasn't in the first half. 
and Adrian Mullen disappears in the second half a small bit. So, like, I mean, look, they'll be looking at that themselves, saying that's not that's not what they want to do in the in the big games, you know. Uh, a few people are multitasking at the moment. Scale and Murphy are actually on TV right now on TG Carr at the same time. They're showing Galway Kilkenny 2012. So, uh, unfortunately, as Richard... Uh, which which there, Galway Kilkenny 2012 now? Because one, one of us is going to be sad. <laughs> and one, yeah, it depends which one, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe you can inform us which one, because obviously we can knock the TV off before, uh, before coming on here. So, um, you can pick this one up, Podge. Coming in from Tom's time. Are Clare now favourites to beat Limerick and Ennis? Um, I don't know. I think it's probably a 50-50 game. Um, I think Limerick are all Ireland champions, obviously. Past four years, they're the, they're the forum team. Um, the fact that it's on in Ennis obviously helps clear. Um, so I'd say it'll be like a scale, get out Paddy Poor up again there and check. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had it last week. So, uh, I, but I'd say it'll be, I'd say it'll be 50-50 kind of. That's the way, I, that's the way I'd have it anyway, going off Clare's form in the league. But, Kilkenny's delivery, Paul, and lads, if you were watching TV, I couldn't get over how reckless it was. Like, not looking as yeah. high as as high as they could possibly hit it. Yeah. Like, uh, there was someone to balls coming down with snow on the Clare's backs and they were just eating it up. Yeah, there was a few, particularly in the last, uh, I'd say, five minutes, because I was looking like after the game in Ennis, where Kilkenny had opportunities to maybe get two or three points and, and draw the game. We, we felt that they were going for goal a bit much for the last few minutes. So I was keeping an eye on this and, like, Okay, I know the crowd got into it, but I think like Kenny will look at it and say, maybe we didn't keep her cool. You know, when Murphy went go for a sharp puck out and lads were lamping long balls down. Knowing that, you know, Davy Fitzgerald and the boys are going to sit back that small bit more now and support the half back line. And on the night like that, like if I'm thinking as a back ball lands down, you're just going to fucking kill it. Like just kill it, step on it. And that's not going to play into the forward's hands, draw it into a rope, kill down the clock. So no, I agree with you. Like the one thing I was looking to see, well, could Kenny keep going for points? And the one thing I could see was, they're, they're landing real high ball down on top of a big full, big half back line with Adam Hogan in great form breaking off the shoulder, picking up balls. And I was there going, geez, just carry it a small bit here. Be patient. You know, don't let the crowd get up on your back here. Just be patient. But yeah, I think it's something. And look, we've said it before. It's been a trade of Kenny, uh, like even teams I was in that, you know, there was tendencies to strike those long balls. So I think Derek will be looking at it saying, when we come under pressure, we need to be able to keep calm and keep working that ball through the lines and get the scores. Don't be panicking for goals in the last minute or so. Mm. What do you think, Skell? He's frozen, isn't he? Well, he's a little bit frozen, is he? I think he is. I'm back. I'm back. Last time. <laughs> Go on. Who's, who's winning in Ennis in a couple of weeks' time, Skell? Oh, it's a really good question. Um, I just think, like, from, from looking at it today, I thought, you know, Brian Lohan was kind of in a really good position. He was able to get game time into Shane O'Donnell, get into Aaron Shanner, get David McInerney back in, and it just kind of looked like they were they were hitting their stride at the very right time. That They're two weeks out from championship and they're bringing back some of the main players. Like, and, you know, their big players are coming back and, and making big impacts. You remember Cordy gets the goal, Puck out comes down, who wins it? Shane O'Donnell gets a free, you know, so the, these type players come in and, and, and make a huge impact. So I think the home crowd, a bit of momentum, like we were saying, it's going to be a toss up there, you know, regardless of of, of, uh, of what, what today's result was. So I, I'm going to have to side with Clare. I think on all things equal, the form, the way it is at the minute, you know, I'm, I'm siding with Clare, which is a rarity, Podge, I know. I know it's a rarity, because you told me before, I hate Clare. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't. laughs> um, question about Tony Kelly. No, but I think from... they look clear in a great position, that's... No, they are. I, I think this is a this is the way you want to start your year. Um, no, Mitchell, will Tony Kelly be available for the Limerick game? I don't know. I mean, he's been warming up a bit, Podge, in the last few days, but obviously we haven't seen him back on the pitch. Like, maybe it's a risk to throw him straight in at the start of the championship, but he's probably going to be in the bench, would you think? Yeah, hopefully from a clear point of view, like it's such a like it's tough. It's a tough two games. You don't get a break in between the games. Like it'd be great if we'd Limerick a week off and then another game, but it's Limerick and then Cork. So um, no, it is it is tough. But in fairness to Clare, it's not like this league form is has come out of nowhere. Like I really do feel like this is kind of consistent over the last three years that they've been fairly consistent. Like I know Kilkenny annihilated them not last year, the year before in Crow Park, but I think if Clare turned over Kilkenny last year in Crow Park, I don't think anyone had too many arguments. They probably weren't the better team, but they weren't too far off it. But um, So I just don't think this form has come from nowhere. They're very competitive with Limerick nearly every time they played them um, for the last three years. So it's probably going to be a point either way. So hopefully the home advantage and just the league form will 
edged for us. Like Limerick are going to be, like Limerick had a tough day out against Kilkenny and they're going to be a wounded animal coming into the game. And Clare are going to be aware of that. Like, so Clare will be under no illusions. Like, they're not going to think that Limerick have gone anywhere and it's going to be an epic battle and one that everyone, I think every hurling GA supporter is going to look forward to. I see Tommy Rooney kind of slowly edging back into the room there. So he's probably looking to get his gear now at the moment. So we'll keep you just for another couple of minutes, Paul, before we let you go. An obvious question, and Skell posed it last week. One of the things about these guys coming back in, whereas three or four starters from last year that are now fit again, is it going to be a job for them to actually get back in the team, given what some of these fringe players have done for Clare during the league? Yeah, well, I think Reedy, even though he didn't score tonight, really put his hand up for a starting spot. Like, his work rate when we couldn't win the ball, winning rock ball when we needed it. Because Kilkenny probably dominated the Rooks in the first half and Clare probably dominated in the second half. But while they were dominating Kilkenny, Reedy was picking up balls and making things happen. So I think he was a shining light. And um, Mark Rogers was excellent work rate as well. But yeah, they've, they've great options. They have 10 forwards I was naming on the way down in the card that I don't think anyone in Clare would argue that if one started ahead of another, I don't think they'd have too many arguments. Now, there is a few that, like David Fitz, Rogers, probably now Tony, Sods, they're going to be playing like, so if, if they're fit... But it's just um, it's just hard to know with Tony. It's such a tough game to be thrown into with an injury. If you're carrying something like it's just, mm. it's going to be the intensity of that is just going to be off the off the chains. Like it's the yeah. sheds are going to be rattling in Cusick Park, and it's just going to be serious atmosphere. Like it's uh, one that everyone's looking forward to. But yeah, it's um, it's it's good. We have options. It's great that we do have options. Uh, Can let's I ask go you around the house. Oh, no, yeah. go on, you go first, Gal. Then we do it. Would you play Rogers at eleven now going forward? I think, like, I don't think he was at 11 for a lot of today. I think him and Reedy really were swapping in and out. And I think that yeah. worked well because they couldn't put, like, a man marking cornerback or fullback on him. That was stuck to him. And I think uh, that, like, he was very effective. But, yeah, Skell in the second half when he was out centre forward there and the ball was breaking, he was picking up and breaking the line. Like, he's a fair, powerful runner. And he was causing them all kinds of trouble. So, yeah. He's a real free size to slip a tackle. Yeah. <laughs> His feet are incredible, yeah. Uh, he's gift. He's gifted. He's gifted. Yeah. Um, two other questions I don't want to go around the houses on this one from Enda Burke was it a penalty though seemed very harsh on Rogers. Murph be the Kilkenny voice on this one uh, yeah I think it was harsh um, I'm just trying to think back on it now it was harsh because Donnelly had gotten rid of the ball but like we've often seen freeze as well given for I suppose Johnny Murphy maybe Johnny Murphy was looking at it from the point of view that he maybe look at John Donnelly that was going to carry on maybe receive the ball back like because it was a deliberate foul anyway I think where a lot of people are going, what's going on when you watch it back? John Donnelly pops the ball off. <clears> the tackle comes in a second or two afterwards. Then it's a harsh one. It is harsh, I'll be honest, because the man in possession, I think, was Owen Cody at the time. And the opportunity was kind of gone because Owen Cody, I think, fumbled it. He The pass kind of went behind him and he dropped it. So I will say that that one on, on, on that side was harsh. Um, but the other side is, if, if Owen Cody catches that ball, is John Donnelly still in play? Is that foul now a cynical foul? Like, I, I'd actually, this is the type of one I'd like to hear Johnny Murphy's viewing it because Johnny Murphy was very quick to look at and go, yeah, that's a free. And you could see Rogers was in fairness to Rogers, like I mean, and I've often said it, Rogers was in the right position there, going, well, look, if someone has to take one for the team here. Let's just get in and fucking, you know, he didn't know John Donnelly was going to pass it off. Um, but look, as it played out, easy for us to say in hindsight that it was harsh. Johnny Murphy got one look. I can see where he's coming from. I can see how he was trying to play the rule. Uh, I definitely, I definitely would have been standing up if I was a Clare fan. Now, <laughs> being fairly upset, and as a Kilkenny fan, I was happy enough. But again, similar enough where I was saying that, like, I, I, I made me peace with Adrian Mullen uh, being pulled back for a free because you know to get one look at it was there having a contact. Cahill Malone's not a man to go down. Right, go for a free there and move on. He got one look at this and he just saw, you know, uh, Rogers swiping at Donnelly and Donnelly potentially a man going through on goal. So I can see where it came from. So look, it was a harsh one, um, but. I, I wouldn't fully jump on Johnny Murphy's back off the back of it either. Mm. Uh, I would agree, by the way, with the comment that said the Skell was definitely texting his mother to find out about which game it was on TG Carr and to let her know that he was on TG Carr at the same time as well. I, I also wonder, Skell, at this stage, what's happened with Murph's mouth? So since he went all sweary on Taylor Swift a couple of weeks ago, oh, sorry. The, man, the man's swearing away like a trooper tonight. Yeah, I see, look, it's, it's rare to say now, but actually I'm I'm growing more as a person. I didn't even notice. Is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's whole demeanor, his language, he's, he's going south. And even after last week, Murph, I thought you were being the, you're the, 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 the best citizen in the country last week. You're, you're, you're bringing the pod down now, Murph. You're bringing it down. I actually haven't even noticed that I've been cursing. You called Taylor Swift a bitch, Murph. You called her a bitch. I mean, she come is. on. Like, she's, she she's, she's also a billionaire as of, as of last week, so I don't think she cares that I called her that. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think, do you know what this is now? Live pods 15 minutes after Kenny lose a game isn't a great thing. No. <laughs> I'm trying to be reasonable really? here. Podge is, is here. He's, he's a sound fella. I'm trying to be calm, but... Is anyone going to talk about Murph? Is anyone going to talk about the steps for the second goal and the throw for the third goal? Anyone going to call about it? No. no but you could, the floor is yours in this one. So how many steps did Fitzgerald take, Scal? 11. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> and he threw the ball for the third goal. Am I, am I wrong here? Podge, am I wrong? Well, I'd, I'd have to. I, I I would have to say, Skell. I'd like to turn the camera around to where I am. If I can see that it was a throw ball, our steps like from where uh, I am. Uh, I'm doing something. <laughs> oh God, that's a, that's that a was a very diplomatic out. answer. In fairness, Podge, well so done. So far away from it here you, now. You know well you're definitely in management. You're in management out there and all. I was just looking. I was like, well, Skell, I have to. I have to okay. see it again. I didn't see it. No, I didn't see it. To be honest, but I have to come back to you. <laughs> you, were, you were as bad on Clubber today, Skell. I've never heard you be as political as you were. You've been asked about how the game went. You're like, well, no, we weren't particularly happy with how the first 50 minutes went, but we rallied quite well. And I think both teams would be happy enough to go away with the draw. You were in full manager mode earlier on. Yeah, but do, do you want me to be like I am with the podcast deck? Do you want me to say what I actually want to say? I'd say the no. people in Clubber probably do, yeah. Yeah, but I couldn't. Sure. Like, I couldn't. And it was raining too, and I was freezing. I was just like, just get me an over, please. <laughs> um, someone asked as well, was it true the electricity? Uh, there was a bit of a storm. Now, I was leaving O'Connor Park around about that time. Did the electricity go just at the end of the game? The scoreboard, Did, I yeah. think, went down. Pure, yeah. pure black. Well, the scoreboard was fine, but we, went in, we finished the game, obviously, back in the dressing rooms, having a bit of a chat, and next thing, power down. Oh. Fully black. Place fully black. So everyone with the phones out, and, you know, it's quite a weird place to be in a dressing room. <laughs> it's fully black. <laughs> It's just a bit. Yeah, just looking. a bit. We, 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 we powered through. You did. We'll, we'll talk about the, the twins a bit. Podge, one last question, which is totally irrelevant here. Is Kratlow actually in Limerick? No. Oh. Absolutely not. It's in oh, been clear. Podge, Podge's house is in Kratlow. Yeah. In Limerick? No, it's, in, it's clear. <laughs> I lived in Limerick till I was eight, but it's in clear. Quick, lads, quick one for the, the hurling experts, right? So, Colin Mullen gets a good, like a, a hit off uh, Adrian Mullen. He goes down, he's mm. holding the ball. Okay, ref yeah. blows the whistle to look after the player. Fair enough. If that if Cahal Malone has the ball, that's yeah. a free. That's a free for Cahal. Indirect free. Indirect correct. Right. Yeah, mm. yeah, correct. So yeah. indirect. So so even if even <clears throat> if he doesn't give the free, it's still a free. Correct. Indirect free. Like, if you're in possession of the ball and the whistle is blown for an injury, it's an indirect free to the possession, the team in possession. Yeah, that's. A, that, that's what I was thinking, but like, is that yeah. does it get it, it kind of it gives a bit of I suppose an option if you get a hit in the corner, like you go down, you're holding the ball, like <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose it's it's kind of a, I think that's a one for a referee to go and uh, that feels like he's yeah, yeah. there now, like you know. But no, it's a fair point. Yeah, we had we had in a club game today, and um, we were playing against Tober, and understandably a fella was kind of bottled up, and he got a belt in the head. In fairness, accidentally, but the ref didn't see it, and he went down, and lads in the line were like, so we got an indirect free, and same thing happened there. I suppose I thought it was going to happen. But uh, it didn't because the lines went called and gave a free. But it's just an interesting one to know yeah. that the player with the ball will get the advantage. Like, yeah, well, it's like Claire lads now to be thinking that way. To be fair to him, like you know, it's just. <laughs> just... <laughs> it's only, you know, are you saying Claire lads be diving more? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're just saying? saying? You're saying Paul just thought about this a lot. That's all I'm saying. No, I just saying it's an interesting one. I just saying I, I text I text this to Podge since uh, uh, Podge was it earlier in the year there when when was it you announced your retirement there Podge it was earlier. What, what, what it's name? December in here. December, yeah. I was saying about Podge. I texted into a group that we're in just to explain that uh, how clever Podge is when he's on the pitch because we played Nennis a good few years ago and I fouled Podge and I was kind of up pretending I didn't know he wanted to take the free quickly, stand in front of him. So I was just kind of giving up to the free, saying, no, no, what was that? Like, what's going on? And Podge was just like, no, knew well what was going on, rose it up and just let it off my arse. And like, <laughs> got the free brought up 10 yards. I think I got a yellow card for it. And I went, yeah, you do. Oh, that lad knows the rule book. <laughs> My man. What, what, watching, watching Kilkenny since I was a young guy to see. <laughs> I, I'm mindful, Murph, that people will be wondering here, what has brought the two of you together into a WhatsApp group then? Oh, we went on a trip two years ago to, to Kenya. So there's there's actually, it's a very random smattering of people in the WhatsApp group. It's a great WhatsApp. It's very active. But we went with Alan Kearns to Kenya two years ago. And uh, everybody from Podge to Aidan O'Shea to Alan Nolan in Dublin, it, it, there's camogie players, ladies, ladies Gaelic football players. But uh, anytime anybody does anything of any significance at all, in fairness, the WhatsApp kicks off. So uh, that's the one we're in. It's very active. It's a it's it's a good one. Very positive one to be in, Podge. So we're... Uh, yeah. We were all very, very, very proud of Murph last week as well as you were on the pod. <laughs> oh. We were all very proud of Murph last week standing on the steps of the GPO. 
Have you ever known anyone Podge to be so humble as he was last week? I tried to give him the big lead in. We're saying, you know, we're no longer the three fucking nobodies. This guy's on the telly. Everyone is uh, giving him loads of praise online. And Murphy's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'm just, just glad people enjoyed it, really. Did he not get an apology from that tip fella that said that after Claire beat him by eight points, I thought? We don't want an apology, Podge. We, we actually really <laughs> like it. <laughs> I believe I believe that guy went fairly quiet after about 15 minutes of the game in Portage a couple of weeks ago. We'll hear from him again. You know, Tipper always coming back. Tipper always back. They're the only team I ever know that are uh, are back consistently. Podge, we'll let like you... Like the bad work. dog, Will. Well, Skell, <laughs> calm down. We're back in good terms with them now at this stage, so let's not go too far. Maybe I was a bit unfair with the title a few weeks ago, but it got the it got the clicks and the desired reaction, I guess. Um, Podge, we'll wish you well for the rest of the evening. Um, do you know what? Next time Murph goes on one of his 14 holidays, why don't you come in and be Murph on the pod that week? Uh, absolutely. Love to join you. Great I stuff. heard the money is yeah. good. Um, that's certainly not. Uh, <laughs> you, you can talk to Tommy about that. I believe Tommy might have a few in the pocket, but uh, t- trust me, we Murph, much better. Murph got a new kitchen, budget. a new car, a new wardrobe. Got to, <laughs> Picky, I got a new pint test after, knock, after knocking one a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I believe I, revenue, are, revenue are now looking into uh, Paul Murphy at this stage. Go on, Pod. I, I have two lads coming home with me now, and I told them, find a pub with a fire in it, because uh, I'll have a, a cup of tea and heat up before I go home, but free. <laughs> Fair play, enjoy. Thanks a million, Pods. Why would you go to a pub to get a cup of tea? (laughs) To warm up. up, Nice warm up with something. Right, go on. We're not keeping the man any longer. Thanks a million, Pods. Here's a little bit of Anthony Nash talking about a man who's going to come back in ahead of that first round of Munster, Tony Kelly. And we'll be back with the lads in a sec. Like, I don't know what the story is. Like, I know Tony Kelly's touch and go, but as soon as he's fit, he plays. Like, I don't care if he's been out for eight months, ten months, whatever like that. He can just... He makes that team take his fitness. Like people talk about his hurling, but it's his fitness for me. Like in the seventy-second minute, he's back in the half back line, hand passing a ball. Someone has taken the risk, you know, the hand pass back, and he's gone, and he's striking a hundred yards out of bar. And like last year against Cork, he got a goal. Like he just makes you know such a difference to that team and to opposition who have to worry about him too, whether you man mark them or not. But um, but yeah, as soon as they can get time in their legs, you, you get it in. You can play internal games, and I'm sure they will. But it's great to get that bit of that bit of championship edge, which tomorrow night will be. So there you go. That was uh, Anthony Nash talking to Jared Gilroy during the week. Back into our more normal uh, three-way setup. Uh, we weren't sure whether we were going to be able to get Podge right off the top, so we had to kind of improvise a little bit. But here we are back in the normal uh, run of things now at this stage. Um, does it become any kind of concern, Murph, the fact that Kilkenny have been losing a few finals now? Like I mentioned at the top, that's a couple of league finals, a couple of All-Irelands over the last uh, two and a bit seasons. Cody's last year and the first two years for Derek now. Is it a concern that Kilkenny are getting to that point but not getting over the line? Uh I'm not concerned. Um, I, I think I saw Adrian Mullen was interviewed during the week for the, uh, it was either the league final or the launch of the championship, one or the other. But um, no, like at this stage, like it, it's it's been great in the first place that a team, I suppose, that has been spoken about being in transition at different times um, has been consistently getting the finals. I think at the start of each, start of each respective year, let's say 2022, Kilkenny maybe weren't tip, tipped to even get to the final. Like a semi-final would have been perceived as a good year for Kilkenny. So to get to that final, beaten by you know two good, Lim- uh, well, excellent Limerick teams uh, in the last two finals. Like this match, y- you can point to things there to say that Kilkenny didn't perform. And Kilkenny will look at that and they'll go, you know, that's disappointing. But I think, you know, it, would you would you give a league final or a Leinster final to Kilkenny? Kilkenny will take a Leinster final. And when, you know, pushes come to shove in the Leinster finals, they've performed, which is good. When it gets to the All-Ireland, you know, Limerick, I just think Limerick have been outstanding in the All-Ireland finals. I know we, we were circling back around to it <clears> several <throat> times, but you can kind of make your peace with being beaten by the better team that, you know, there wasn't really opportunities in those finals for Kilkenny to close out a, a game that they were winning. That just wasn't there, you know. So I don't feel that, you know, yeah, I, I know where you're coming from that, you know, sometimes for counties, they are consistently get to finals, lose them, and then it becomes a bit of a hoodoo on their back and you wonder is it causing pressure. But I don't think it's causing pressure on, on this uh, on this Kilkenny team. Um, I think they're, they're look in fairness, they've when 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 they've needed to Leinster finals, they've won. Okay, they lost there this evening. They'll they'll have a look at why they lost, what can they improve on? Um, and then with players to come back as well. So I don't think they'll be too distraught about this evening. Um, I mean, on the flip side of that, you're looking at Clare and people are talking about Clare losing to Kilkenny and all in semi finals. So like I don't think I, I personally don't think Clare will have a hoodoo on their back, like if Kilkenny and Clare are to meet in an all Ireland semi final this year. And I, I similarly I don't think Kilkenny losing a league final today will Come, we'll, we'll come back to haunt him in either a Leinster final 
Um, and I just think in All Ireland's a little bit of a standalone. I don't think league finals or Leinster finals or anything feed into All Ireland's. I think All Ireland's feed into All Ireland. So no, at this stage, I'm not. I'm not concerned. Um, you'd love them to have maybe gotten one of those uh, ones that are left behind, either league or two All Ireland's. Um, but <clears throat> at this stage, no, I don't think there's any panic stations at all. Mm. Uh, Kieran Fay here. Paul, can I ask what was it like at Buckley's wedding? Can't believe it was before the final. Did it all work out great? I think yeah. you said it was. It was a very pleasant affair, wasn't it? It was great, yeah. It was great, crack. I mean, like, um, sure, a lot of the lads, uh, they're, they're, sure, everybody was there and stuff, and you, you, you forgot it was, sure, you got, forgot it was before the All Ireland final. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, there are ba- days bigger than All Ireland finals as well. But um, no, it was a great day, and like, I mean, sure, all his club mates, um, all Neves club mates, friends, everybody, you know, had a great night all together. Obviously, you know, Walter Welch was one of his best men. You know, took took it easy on the day and went to went home early. All this sort of stuff, but no, it was a great day. Like, I mean, I think that was more of a story in the papers and for people in the fanfare running up to it there because people are used to weddings being absolute mayhem or whatever. But like, bar a few players having to just take it easy and head home. Like, I mean, it was absolutely it was great. Like, you know, you you, you wouldn't notice any difference. How would you have felt, Skell, if one of the Galway lads had said the wedding's going to be on the week of the match? Um, I wouldn't feel about. I wouldn't feel you know angry. I wouldn't feel disappointed. Like at the end of the day, like a wedding is one of the, the biggest days in the person's life, and it's just I suppose it was just unlucky on their behalf at the way it felt, you know. Um, and I know that I suppose when they look back, obviously, obviously the, the match didn't go the way that they they'd have liked in, in the overall scheme of things in, in, in terms of the year. But I think they look back with fond memories to their day. Their day is their day, like you know what I mean. And mm-hmm. I, I we've often seen it here with, with replays clashing with weddings, but. I always think that the matches should work around <laughs> those days because if uh, if if you're running a normal life, you should only have one one per life, as <laughs> they say. <laughs> so you want to make 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 the most of it, yeah. But um, I haven't actually had a situation where whereby um, you know it's, it, we've had clashes. I, even my own honeymoon, I think, or like my own honeymoon, so my own wedding, um, it clashed with kind of the. T- and uh, I'm probably gone now. Why? Why am I? No, do you know what happened? Exactly. It actually, for anyone who was waiting to see when it actually happened, the Wi-Fi just skipped as you're about to say when it was. So if you can hear me now, I'm guessing you were saying it was in the middle of the club season. <laughs> and now he's really he's, he's, he's back. Hold on. He looks frustrated, but he's back. I'm back, Liz, am I? You are, yeah. So go on. When did when did oh, the wedding take place during the club season, was it? Uh, my own wedding said it took place yeah. in, in December. Um, you're going to ask me a date. Oh God! <laughs> I hope you remember because de- I know she listens. Thirtieth of December, two thousand seventeen, but it coincided actually with the team holiday. And like some of the guys were actually asking me, like, you know, can we go on the holiday? You know, and I was kind of saying, of course you can go on the holiday for God's sake. <laughs> I'm not going to be too too disappointed, but um, you know, it's a rarity that these things happen. But it, is, it can be disappointing if it does clash. Hmm. I still go along to it though. Uh, Eid McAuliffe. Also, before I go to that, Kieran Fay was asking Murph, did you stay up late the night of the wedding? We did. It's a wedding. We did. I presume players didn't. I, I'd imagine those no, who no. were in action didn't. Not a long gone. Uh, yeah. gone. Okay. Uh, so what kind of question is there? Uh, how come Kilkenny didn't come at Clare like they did at Limerick, or was it just because Clare didn't let them? I'm not sure. Uh, this is not KK as we know them. Wayward passing, terrible penalty. Right, so the penalty I think you have to take aside. You were given the penalty scale a little bit of... Um, uh, I guess you were saying that, unfortunately for him, it seemed to stick in the ground a little bit as well. You could see what Cody was actually trying to do. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I, it it became apparent in the first half will, <clears throat> when the ball dropped into Owen Murphy and it stuck on the ground heavily, and he actually struggled to get it up. Um, so it just it just showed that that area was re- <clears throat> was obviously well trafficked, very wet. So I I thought at the, at the time that maybe Owen would have seen, Owen Cordy would have seen that maybe the best option is not to bounce it. Um, but ultimately that's where he tried. Probably two things he did actually at the penalty that surprised me. Number one was actually he roll lifted the penalty, mm-hmm. and as he was taking the penalty, I was ask, asking myself, when is the last time he's taken one? Because I presume TJ takes them all for Bally Hill. Um, but he rolled it for the penalty and then struck it into the ground. So what roll if I can take, that's his, that's his technique. But hitting into the ground with that kind of condition, you know, it just took the spin and spur out of the ball entirely. And it became an easy enough of save for Quilligan. And, but didn't, it wasn't without drama because when he got up, lost his bearings a bit. He poked it back out into the crowd. <laughs> and uh, it, it could have could could easily got resulted in another shot again. But it didn't. So I think um, it's just disappointing overall. And... To be honest, I didn't agree with the penalty decision in the first place. So sometimes them things have a way of working out. Mm. Uh, by the way, we're in serious trouble because I've got two or three texts going, really enjoy Podge, get him back for championships. So I don't know, maybe because it's rare. Maybe the guys have seen you guys a bit too much. Uh, maybe that's why they love yeah. Podge so much. But uh, I think we'll definitely have him back on. I mean, the man's committed to it now at this stage. So 
Um, yeah, look, loads, loads of people saying, look, yeah. I'd sooner have an All Ireland. You can't have. When's your you have both. When's your next holiday, Murph? Oh, tell the truth. Now. Tell the truth. <laughs> July. I think we're booked in for July. Oh, no. I think. Yeah. Not, not the week of the All Ireland final or anything, no. No, 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 not that, not that week. No. I've at least waited till we're, till we're finished. Till you, you've sucked me dry altogether now of all my hurling analysis. Yeah, well, I think I think we might <laughs> have a roadshow around then. I think the BBC might need you around about that time for the All Ireland final as well. So it's yes. probably a good time to be around. In fairness. Um, mm. Right. Um, obviously, there's a few other bits and pieces. We'll keep an eye on your comments coming through here. But uh, well, I think about it, the league overall, we're happy enough, Skell, then to, after we've seen the league final and some good performances tonight, you still sticking with David Fitzgerald as your hurler of the league? I think all things being equal and, and con- con- taking con- uh, consistency, as, as consistency is the main factor. You know, I, I'd have to keep him as, as player of the league. Um you know, he, he didn't have a huge, like when I say a huge involvement today, you know, he, in terms of scoring, he didn't have a massive involvement bar, bar his goal, but like he was, a, he was a menace and he was a huge target man for Claire Pocouts in the second half. Um, he is a, he's a ferocious tackler to have in the half forward lane between himself and Duggan. Um, he's a huge ball carrier, huge ball winner. You know, he's an out ball, he's a great shooter. So like, and he's got a huge engine. So all in all, when you, when you look at all them aspects to his game, he seems to bring them every day, which results in a kind of a consistent performance in day in, day out. So I think, you know, I don't think there's anyone too close to him. I don't think that's, that's really up for debate. <clears throat> Even more physical kinema, I'd say you probably agree with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, like in fairness, at the start, you think back to start the league, Garrod O'Connor looked like the fellow <clears throat> was just going to light it up for the whole league. Um, and then like the likes of Davy Fitz just kind of comes into it that bit more. Um, yeah, there was, no one, there was no one who completely stole the show. He was Mr. Consistent at this thing for the whole league. And within that then had really yeah. big performances throughout. So yeah, you couldn't take it from him at this stage, no. Yeah, uh, this is a good one from Jack O'Shea. Yeah. Who now is the stronger bench, Limerick or Clare? Clare's yeah. bench looks very strong this year. That could well be a factor. I think there's a lot of games to play, Skell. Um, as That's I mentioned, a very hard Clare, question. Clare, though, Clare have used 34 team. players, and Limerick don't tend to go that deep into their bench, but they haven't had to yeah. because their team has yeah. been so strong. Yeah, I, I just think it's a very, very hard question to answer at this stage. I don't think we really get a true effect of until, let's say, halfway through Munster when we see big tests posed to each panel and can the players coming in off the bench, you know, can they maintain the level that the first 15 have produced, you know, for, let's say, 40, 50 minutes? So I think everyone's everyone knows Limerick's bench has been proven and um, that they kind of finished the job, if you like. So Clare's bench has obviously w- went through the league very, very well, have, has shown they have strength in numbers. But now when it comes to championship, can they produce the 20-man performance for, you know, for 70, 75 minutes? That that can't be answered right now. I think that's, I think we know in a month's time, to be honest, where, where things stand. Hmm. Uh, young player... Murph, are we sticking with Gerald O'Connor at the end of it? or Because there is that kind of thing where the semi-final, he had a quieter semi-final, didn't score. Mm. And we were so hyped about him the few weeks before that that maybe that colours our opinion a lot. With a little bit of perspective now and having watched all the games in the league, do we keep him as our young hurler of the year? Or sorry, not young hurler of the year, young hurler of the league, sorry. That's yeah, young, yeah young hurler. <laughs> um, uh, I... Did we not? Did we chat about this a few weeks ago? And I think we I, I have other names rattling around my head at the moment. Maybe he Which is, one? yeah. Who's who's in there? No, I'm trying to think. I, I just have a. I, I thought we spoke with this. I think this question has been asked once or twice, um, and a few people were wondering who were the different players, different players. But no, to be fair, Garota Connor, like I mean, he had a really good start at the league, and that's something we often forget about. I think when we're picking these things at the end of the year, like you know, All Star teams and Hurler of the Year and all this, we also we often forget really good performances at the start of championships and leagues, which are as important as finishing it out. So, in fairness, Garota Connor, he was he was outstanding the first few matches. Um, and then, yeah, maybe look. I mean, stepped away from those really high standards briefly within games. Then was quite enough in the semi final. But nevertheless, I think he, I suppose, he merits um, merits being the best young player in the league. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there was anyone else really over overtook him in that in that role. Mm. Um, you can take this one, Murph, because very specific to your county. TJ Mills here. Should Murphy, Owen Murphy in this case, have been brought up for the penalty? It's not the done thing in Kilkenny, but did withdrawing Drennan cost Kilkenny the game? I suppose he banged in a couple of good penalties during the league, didn't he? Uh, it was only after uh, knowing the penalty taker other than Reed. So they effectively, Kilkenny ended up in a situation where obviously TJ is not on the pitch. Mm. You don't then at that stage have Billy Drennan, who's a very good dead ball striker. And so it kind of falls to Cody by default as captain to take the penalty, I suppose. Yeah. Now, you would have wanted Billy Drennan on. It's not that the management would have known you were going to get a penalty with two minutes to go, but you mm-hmm. would love to have had Drennan on the pitch. Yeah. Um, no, look, it wasn't the losing of the game withdrawn. Billy Drennan, like, you, you can't um, you can't 
I suppose, worry about your 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 starting team and your playing team by thinking of hypothetically, what if we get a penalty? You know, you should at least have, if you're really, I suppose, serious about your team and think that we, you know, a team could be in contention, that you, you should at least have always one, maybe two good penalty takers on the field. And they don't necessarily have to be free takers either. Um, bringing up Owen Murphy, like that was the kind of done thing years ago when you had three on the line or four on the line or whatever it was even a 21 you bring them up because the power of a goalkeeping hurl you could drive a ball through the whole lot of them but it's all about placement now it's all about technique now getting it either low down into a bottom corner away from keeper or keeping it high um so technique really is it is the thing but i think i think look can you really certainly look at it from now on going well you know own cody adrian mullen um, you know, even Billy Ryan there, like Billy Ryan has, has great technique as well. I think Derek will be looking at it going, well, okay, if TJ isn't on, the, isn't on the pitch, we do need someone to put these away because they're gifts at the same time. You know, you need to put them away. But I, I, no, I wouldn't say it's the losing of the game. I Like like I said earlier, if I was to point to other factors that were losing of the game, you know, Kilkenny's shot decision, where they were taking shots from, the wides in the first half, those far, rank far higher than hanging it all on a penalty either. Hmm. Uh Another piece of news, of course, coming in, Skell, on, I think it was Friday, it was uh, confirmed by the Limerick camp that Darrell Donovan's going to miss the first two games. Uh, so he's not going to be around for Limerick for Clare or Tipperary, uh, which is far from ideal, because we're yeah. talking about you know how much he was missed in the Kilkenny game as well. I don't know how they reshuffle or who plays in midfield, especially against Clare in a couple of weeks. Um, I think they've shown over, over the last three years, you know, that they've, they've, they've suffered major injuries with certain players, Sean Finn, Keane Lynch, Declan Hannon. And they have a certain adaptability about them with, with, with the players they have that they can play in multiple positions. I don't see anything different in this case, Les. I think Willard Dunham, who is a sort of obviously to be midfield and who partners him, usually will have to be... Because Jared Donovan is usually he's quite, he's quite an industrious operator. He's a very good link man. He's a good ball player. you know. So he's very good coming from, from backs to forwards, transitioning, good at dead balls, etc. So someone of the same kind of... Ilk. You could see a potential there where you have Cotter Neal that, that transfers out, um, moving away from the, from the half-back line. You could have a situation whereby, you know, even Kyle Hayes pops into midfield. You just, you just don't know um, what way John Kyle will structure his team because we've seen it in the past that we've tried to call the positions uh, people, players are going to be playing in and we've got it wrong <laughs> a good few times because they pull rabbits to the hat and put players in positions we'd never expect. So I think it's something that will happen. You know, the same, same thing. And sure, look, look, Keen Lynch, Les, he started his career at midfield. Who knows, he, he might be there again. Kyle Hayes started his career at centre-forward, so there could be a, re- a rejig there. So... Um, they, the bottom line is that they have multiple options. It's as simple as that. <laughs> multiple options. Mm. Uh, what do you reckon, Murphy? I see David Reedy coming up in the suggestions to potentially go into midfield as well. Look, they have time to trial this and they have mm-hmm. their time in Portugal and they get to a position now where it's, we'll know who's one midfielder and we'll put someone beside him. Like, I'm sure they've been trying people out along the way, but who would stand out for you to potentially play there? Yeah, I think I was saying David Reedy um, today. I was actually impressed with him today um, against Galway up in Pier Stadium. Um, he he I think he only got maybe a point from play that day, but he was on the ball a lot. When if you're looking at the type of player that if you're trying to play as Darrow Donovan, Darrow Donovan consistently it gets on a huge amount of ball. And you know, he's not going out there to be stylish, he's not going out there to get loads of scores. He's out there to get primary possession for Limerick, make really good decisions and get them on the attack. And David Reedy, like, I mean, there's a man comfortable playing at centre forward. Drop him out to midfield. You're nearly bringing a seven forward into it. I, like I said that time, I think it was the Monday after we they played Galway. I was actually saying that, you know, there was lots of talk of all the different position changes. And I was kind of saying, just nobody saw him with David Reedy here. I think he had a really good game. He's a lad consistently. When we're always talking about Cahill O'Neill's and all these, when David Reedy gets a chance, he generally does take it in fairness to him. He maybe just doesn't have the physical prowess of other players like that. But, you know, if he's a man who can go into that midfield area get on ball. I don't think John Kiley's going to be too worried about, okay, well, he's not doing 40, 50 yard runs up the field. He's setting up play, he's getting on possession uh, and he's being really effective. So I, I would think David Reedy would definitely be in consideration there. But the one thing I would say with that is, you know, having all the talk of like, you know, your Colin Coughlin, your Cahill O'Neill and all these, like Nimmer generally do tend to go for that phys- physicality, that little bit more. So, Despite the fact I'd be saying that David Reedy be a really good call, it wouldn't surprise me to see that if Limerick have, you know, really strong six backs, one of those backs slotting into midfield, um, you know, being probably Cahill O'Neill maybe, if we're seeing him as a back now. So, uh, look, I think he's a good option, but it's not to say with, with like Skehill was saying there, the options they have that he, he still gets in. Yeah, we'll take a few more questions before we finish up. Uh, River Power here, which is a fair point, cleared loads of opportunities in the second half where they were winning a lot of rook and breaking ball around the half forward line. They were one pass away from being in on goal an alarming number of times. I suppose there's two ways of looking at that scale. One would be, is it a concern for Kilkenny? The amount of times that Clare opened them up in the second mm-hmm. half. And I suppose for Clare, 
young Tommy Walsh's intervention stopped one of them and there was another couple of ones where maybe the hand pass was just ever so slightly off but Clare looked like they were going to get goals they did and like they, they were very dangerous in the high ball I noted in the first half uh, just from my own little notes that Kilkenny were dominating kind of the aerial aerial jewels over the first 20 minutes but then that seemed to kind of turn especially for the first goal and then if you look at uh, even the, 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 the second goal to say Fitzgerald what, what Clare were doing is they were putting Fitzgerald as the main man say, in the middle and they converged five forwards around him which brought in all the Clare forwards and Kilkenny backs then it breaks and next thing it's open country you know what I mean that was for the third goal excuse me so I think there was a bit of a tactic about it too, how they were going to try, try pull in numbers, try win breaks, win primary position, and, and then run, run at Kilkenny. Um, because I think we've we've noticed from years previous that Kilkenny were probably the the best team in, in isolating people one to one and winning your 50 50s, you know, kind of the more the traditional side parlance. So I was kind of surprised to see Claire do that today. They didn't do it for the first 20 minutes, mind you. They were kind of playing to the corners. After that, then they decided to go more, more route one, you could say. And then it starts to work. And when something starts to work, you, you keep doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it, it signs around. It came, it came to fruition. Like, I know Kikini got more individual scores, but the scores clear got to say were on the back of high balls in, winning the primary, winning the break, running at Kikini, and next thing opportunities develop. So I think it's it's, it's definitely another string to Claire's bow. Like, that's something you wouldn't associate them strongly. I mean, it's, of course, in every team, but they seem to have really, you know, harmonized this evening. So it's just, uh, it's it's a sense that they've, they've, They've been searching for goals, Will. You know what I mean? I suppose yeah. in the years previous, they haven't been getting too many, but it's like they've been searching, and now they have the clientele to go and win the primary ball and finish the goal. So they're, they're a dangerous proposition for anyone. Yeah. Uh, Leon McGilton, you can probably only go on your experience, lads, here. I'd say Pod might be celebrating more than Clare uh, when he eventually gets to that pub into a warm snug somewhere. But how will Clare celebrate tonight's win, given it's so close to championship? What do you think, Murph? Probably won't go too crazy with two weeks to go. Yeah, like... <laughs> Won't go crazy. I'd say it'll go for a few points. Yeah, you'd have to. Like, I mean, you have to, at the end of the day, they have silverware on the table heading home. So, you know, go for a few points. And, like, the, the bottom line is, like, a lot of getting getting players to this level and getting a team to this level revi- relies on quite a bit of trust with Brian Lohan. So, like, you know, if Brian Lohan has with them for the last few years, he knows the type of players he has. He knows the personalities he has and the characters he has in the dressing room. And, like, oftentimes you have to leave it back to players. Go, listen, lads, go and have your few points there. But, you know, if players are serious... They'll be up tomorrow morning, you know, flushing out the system, getting getting the body ready. Like at the end of the day, the lads who played this evening um, won't be doing a whole lot. They'll do a bit of recovery maybe tomorrow evening, maybe Tuesday, whatever. Or sorry, we're on Saturday. So they'll either do a bit of recovery tomorrow or Monday. Um, they're not going to be doing a whole lot of physical stuff. So a few points tonight to be absolutely no issue. And I think like a point that I always come back to is, you know, celebrate when you win, you know, enjoy it. Um, if it was next week, now, of course, you'd say, no, take it handy. But, you know, a few lads going home there, meeting up inside Nennis, going for a few points. Uh, and I think, if anything, the fact that they're coming home with silverware, um, you know, a lot of those boys have been going into a pub this evening, having a few drinks, kind of saying, geez, I can't wait for Ennis there in two weeks, can't wait for Limerick. And they'll be serious about it. They're not going to mess around like so. I'd say, look, they're not, like we said, they're not going to go absolutely crazy, but they will go for a few, for a Murphy level of points. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for anyone who missed that, because Paul was reading that comment live as it came in. Uh, Claire That's a great for comment. A Murphy level of points. <laughs> points. That is actually a unit of measurement. That is fair. <laughs> That's, a, That's a great comment. Yeah, what, Man River a, Power is a great comment. What's a fair level of points scale for you? Well, can I just temper this with while, while he's thinking? Oh God! Mm, no temper away. I was, well, I was going to say that I I had to exit stage left with that man one day because it was just like you're six foot five, you're a big enormous ape. I can't stay in with you here now, and I just so I survived this evening. I'm gone. <laughs> I'd, put, I'd like to think I put in a decent shift schedule, but I'd also like to think I'm my man, man enough to say when I'm beat. And I was like, no way. You're you're a fair competitor. What what finished it off? Here, what finished it off? Here, Paul was we were inside in coppers, right? And when I get on the shorts, okay, I don't leave the bar. I just get them, drink them, order them again, get them, drink them, order them again. And you just said, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, that's here. exactly what I said. I, I stood there and it's like, uh, yeah. my life is flashing before my eyes. And I went, oh, God. I didn't think I was going to be back in coppers again. Yeah. Never mind with this behemoth. Absolutely. <laughs> like, he just cleared the place at the bar and I went, right, I'm gone. I, I'm it. just glad I went home. I, I worked it. the next morning oh. early and I was like, oh, whatever. Oh, sorry, lads. Last bus is at half 12. I'm gone. <laughs> the next the next night we'll work together. I'm going to cable tie myself to you. And if I end up in Tullamore or whatever, that's fine. <laughs> I don't mind if you are getting on the train, but... God almighty. Ooh, right. Um, yeah, for Park Glenn, uh, all of them at their rest still got a fancy limerick for five in a row from a government. I don't think anyone's denying that, by the way. 
Um, no. I think it's going to take a hell of a performance from anyone to take them down even once in the championship. And mm. in all likelihood, they're going to have to be beaten twice. And it might have to yeah. be beaten twice in Munster uh, for them to lose the title. So I think they're still there. Uh, but the hardest part of their year really is going to get out of Munster. Oh, I think so too. The hardest yeah, part of their year is going to get to Crow Park. And if they get out of Munster, you know, Oof. buyer beware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah, no. uh, Catnap there. Cork opened Kilkenny up multiple times as well when they played them earlier in the league. So yeah, let's see how it plays out in Leinster. What, the one thing for Kilkenny is... I guess they give the Antrim game to start, then they go to Salt Hill after that. So in a way, they've got a few weeks now to kind of tighten up those issues that maybe they can see yeah. coming out of the league. Uh, Sean as well. Uh, do the lads think Paddy Deegan's delivery until Kenny Forwards was poor? Now, yes. We were praising Paddy Deegan's delivery last week, Skell. So was it, was it bad tonight? I know there's, there's <clears throat> it's just kind of, there's a couple of case case points whereby there was more better options, Will, if you ask me, like where there was kind of a 20-yard or 30-yard pass in front of Paddy Deegan and then he got a couple of times where he just, bombed it up in the sky you know he took on and he took on a shot minute. at one point as i remember i can't remember exactly when it was but i was thinking it was surely another play to be made there <laughs> yeah like the, genuinely like, if you bomb if you bomb a ball into the forwards right unless it's landing like in, in the small square where you can create a small bit of pandemonium i'm not really sure about about the you know the impact of it because when it goes up in the air it becomes a 50 50 at, at, at most it's even a, a 60 30 or 60 40 more if you know it's the back because it's mm -hmm. just a deterrent session so I think in today's game, it's more if you can utilize into a scoring zone, you know, with a 30, 20, 30 yard pass from, from half back to the midfield, it's far more productive than just bombing it, you know. And I think that's what, what happened this evening. And sometimes games go that way. Last minute or so, you have to take that route. But I think when you've got loads of time in your hands, you know, a, a bit more of a methodical ball will suit me. Yeah. Um, fair point uh, raised by Joseph here. Why don't we have a weekend of league hurling finals like the football? I think we probably should. Uh, I liked when the 2A final was in with the Division 1 final a couple of years ago. They've been separated the last two seasons. So we'd um, Offaly and Kildare and then this year's game between Carlo and Leash were both standalone fixtures and they got a little bit lost in the shuffle and they were on TG Carr on the YouTube as opposed to being on TV. Well, all four get onto the TV and the football. I don't know who said it last week, but there was a fair point raised on the YouTube that we're probably as guilty as anyone of this where they said, lads, you're campaigning for the fact that there should be more hurling talked about outside of the main counties. And yet you only do a very short piece about the Division 2A final last week. It's a very fair point. But again, it was one of those where that game was 100% off-Broadway. And we talked about it a bit, I think, on the, the members' pod afterwards as well. But it, it definitely looked... And there's, there's no doubting, even if you want to say to us that we don't talk enough about the McDonough Cup over the next few weeks. The McDonough Cup is just off to its own side, despite the fact it's going to be very closely contested over the next while. And maybe the reason the 2A final is a bit earlier, I would have a sneaky feeling it's because of when the McDonough starts, that they want to have that extra week yeah. for preparation. I would think is probably the reason why uh, these aren't bundled into the same week. But uh, take the point on last week there. And let's see if there's anything else we can uh, come into here just before we finish up. Uh, Niall Heffernan sent a fully Matt Sharp, Shane O'Donnell, could be one of the players, uh, best players in the country, uh, to give Hugh Lawler major hassle judging by this match. So, yeah, again, he's a guy who always turns up against Kilkenny as well. Uh, just about to finish up now, lads. River Power again, who's been quick fire on the comments over the last while. A lot of things didn't go right for Kilkenny, but they can still be very happy with the work rate and commitment. Some of the inexperienced lads will come on a lot in the back of that. W would you kind of take that point, Murph, that kind of overall this hasn't been a bad league for Kilkenny? No, no. Overall, with the league, um, I'd be quite happy. Like, I can still think back of in instances where um, like there was full halves there where they weren't performing well. Uh, and Derek... Um, mentioned those after the games as well, but like at the end of the day, they came in. They, they've gotten to a league final, um, playing well, um, using quite a bit of the panel as well, bringing on a few more players. So and and, and beating Limerick as well. Like I mean, look, granted you can take that on its merits whatever way you want, but like I mean, that as a as a gauge coming through is good. Um, but they're still building at the same time. You know, I think Clare coming through it unbeaten. Um, they're coming into it with a great bit of positivity, but I think they. I think that's the way Clare need to leave the league anyway because it's such a quick turnaround into Munster. Like we said, we mentioned the Kenny have the, the Antrim match and then really bullseye is on uh, Pierce Stadium then and uh, the Galway match. But um, yeah, look, I, I think I, I'd be happy with Kenny after this, but I still think there'll be a sting in the tail of Kenny after this league final. You know, we said it, played Limerick, grand, great, great match, but you, you forget about that straight away now that they've lost this match, a match that potentially they could have won if they were if they weren't as wasteful so i think those learn th those lessons to be learned going away i think derek you know once the lads come back in on monday or tuesday night i think derek is going look at lads at the end of the day now we're, we, it's, it's very serious from here on you know those mistakes that we, we promised ourselves we build on um 
we could be, you know, did this this could result in us losing the Leinster final. It could resu- result in us losing all Ireland semi final, whatever it is from here on. So, um, I'd be happy with where they are, but happy that they're still building at the same time. Uh, DM in from Fancy Hurling 2024 Championship is uh, <clears throat> just underway. People want to join up for that. How quickly it comes around. James Skettle has performed the best of the three of us in the league. I'm told the final scores are just about to go up. Oh, well, he did. He started really. That well. means Murph. That oh. means Murph. You have to get a temporary tattoo. Up to <laughs> yeah, nearly spat the out. <laughs> <laughs> Left cheek. Oh god! Uh, I'll let you work that out. Um, he I'll didn't say no, and... Will. He didn't say no. He didn't no. say no. Um, no. I'll come along and, and no. video no. some of it or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, video needed. No. Right to, to two other questions. Tom <laughs> Henderson uh, is pulling your opponent's jersey over his head a new hurling tactic? Can we all do that now? Did that happened once during the game today. It has happened a few times over the last while, though. I, I didn't see it happen today. Well, I'm not saying it didn't, but when did it happen today? Uh, I'm trying to think when I it was. I did, see a, I did see a jersey lift pull at one point. Okay. I'll have to back and watch and see what it was. But yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think it's been happening all that often, though. No, it's it's not something I've noticed throughout the league now where, where jerseys have been no. pulled off lads or anything like that. No, Actually, right. yeah. We'll keep an eye on it, Tom Henderson, over the next while. And the last question then, because. Uh, seems there's some kind of party going on outside my door now at this stage, is coming in from Andrew Mullen. And this is the great one where I can bounce the ball and the two lads can argue for their counties. Who's the favourite for Leinster, lads? Skell? <laughs> Did that say favourite singer for Leinster? Favourite singer? Or? No, 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 no. F- oh. I presume it should have meant favourites for Leinster, but it's predictive text that's going to be. All right. I don't think we have um, any favourites. I was going to go with Joe Dolan there, but fuck right. We'll it surely meant favourites for Leinster. Yeah, favourites for Leinster. Well, I'll answer both questions. I'll give you my favourite singer, I'll give you my favourite for Leinster. <laughs> my who, uh, would you believe, lads, my favourite singer to listen to is Miley Cyrus. Really? Hang on for a second. Favourite singer in Leinster. No, she's not from I'm, Leinster, but I'm willing I'm to allow Miley this to Cyrus be. in Leinster. This doesn't have to be someone from Leinster. It doesn't have to be like, well, I Or do your man like say favourite singer for Leinster, 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 <laughs> Lovely. That's a, see, simple and effective. I still simple have to circle effective. back here. Miley's like I thought this was a person from Leinster that could sing. I know it's predictive text. Yeah, mm. sorry, there he is. Sorry, lads. Mm. Favorites for Leinster. Okay, Andrew, we're gone now. We're gone. This is what happens when predictive text. But anyway, Luke Kelly's a fair shout now. Great shout, Miley Cyrus. We have to. Ah, oh, she's brilliant. <laughs> she's, she's not a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you think about this, you're going to take a Kenny, right? Scale this coming from Endon. It's a very fair one. When are we getting the scale gym playlist? Can you send it on to me and I'll put it in the YouTube comments? Yeah, I asked Grace. Look, sometimes on, on some app, apps I'm not great. I'm not very savvy. So I've asked Grace how oh. I can share that playlist with right. you. I can tell you now live. So what you do is... I just figure it out. Go into Spotify, right? Go into where you have I can't because I'm on hotspot for the phone here, Will, right? Okay, well, after you do it, it doesn't have to be right now. I'll put, I'll put it in the comments after we finish. <laughs> Technology and capital. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Uh, right, so video video title sorted wrecking ball. Yeah, I'm sure we can fit that in in there. Uh, oh, one trick pony. This is one for you, Murph. And this is literally the last one because I'll get shot. The rest will have to go into the members' pod if anything comes in here. Can Arsenal win the league, Murph? Oh, they can. Yeah, they absolutely can. Was it eight games left now? Um, it's going to take though. See, like you just have to look at it and go. It's it's going to take someone tripping up Man City, like Liverpool. Jeez, Liverpool are going well though at the same time. But what is it? I think it's two points. Once Liverpool win, it's two points at the top of the league, then is what the difference is. But like once, once Liverpool win is a bit of an assumption given they lost there a few weeks ago in the cup. But anyway. That's true. Yeah, it's Man City tripping up is really the one. Ar- Arsenal absolutely can. Like, I mean, away to Brighton today, 3 0. Uh it was a Trossard, Havertz, and Saka. Yeah, they can. They can, yeah. Really I'm way more confident this year now than than last year. But ah, just still feels like Man City until it's like two games to go and Arsenal are ahead by four or something. Sorry, Paul Mac. Paul Mac, Mac eighty two <laughs> with the most gale of comments that we will ever have. <laughs> Soccer talk. I'm off. So maybe it's a good time for us to go off. Thanks, okay. to everyone who has uh, joined us on the live stream as well. This has been fun. Uh, let's do another one in a few weeks' time when uh, when championship comes round. Uh, it doesn't mean we have to go back and reassemble for a members pod at some point uh, during the week, which will be available for OTB members. We'll uh, 
we'll find plenty to talk about I have no doubt we'll do a bit of a breakdown of uh, how the league has been for all of us as well but thanks everyone who has joined us uh, about 1,500 people watching at the moment between uh, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter currently so we will take our leave hopefully you'll join us again in a few weeks the pod will be up in audio form uh, very very soon indeed if you want to listen back and I promise that once we find out how to get Skell to get back onto his Wi-Fi I will put the playlist into the YouTube comments after this video as well Paul Murphy it's been a pleasure thanks a million thanks very much James Skell thank you See you, folks. Thanks. <clears throat> and of course, the hurling pod is brought to you by Board Gosh Energy. They are the proud sponsors of the All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. OTB's The Hurling Pod with Board Gosh Energy, proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship.